Hi, right, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, in part one, we uh, solved the problem with the drive on this where it wasn't working at all, and that was um, the um, via down here. You can just about see um, where I patched a wire, I think, across to the via over on this side here. Uh, and I can show you that in a minute. We'll, uh, what I'll probably do is just remove the wire, measure the resistance, because that was something I didn't show in that video. I did actually record it and I lost a bit of footage, um, but I measured the resistance between the wire on this side and the you know the side on the other underside of the board there and there was no connectivity there was a bit of resistance there so that was the issue and it's important to note that this is one of the reasons why when you do a recap of something like this you need to the cleanup work is you know is of importance you've got to really focus on cleaning up all the electrical light and inspecting the wires cleaning them up patching them up etc because when you get a broken fire like that that looks to be on a supply rail, could be ground. So one of these ICs, perhaps this one here, has either got no supply into it or no uh, ground uh, rail. Uh, and things like that, you know, you can, call, can cause failures, you can get latch up type problems and things like that. So, you know, just something as simple as electrolyte, you may think, oh, all it could do is eat a trace that you may then need, then need to fix in the future, but it could cause further damage. And actually, I believe that's what's caused the gear. You know, in part one there, we saw some teeth, the upper teeth there. When the carriage has moved all the way across to the upper tracks, you know, almost right to the end here, the teeth that were aligned with the worm gear at that particular point were all chipped off. Um, and when we first powered this in uh, on in part one, you saw that you know the carriage was all the way to the right, the motor was going round. The focus coils were you know fully engaged, and I think this motor was being forced that way by the faults. So that's a good reason, let's say, to to check you know and double check all these wires uh, and make sure you clean up thoroughly when recapping something like this. Um, I think if someone had you know cleaned up properly and recapped it with these through hole caps, cleaned up the flux, it wouldn't have needed this work. I think the gear would have been okay, wouldn't have had the, the, the faults at all with it, the sound wouldn't be an issue because that's a problem in part one, we had an issue with the sound. And I suspect the issue with the sound could well be some of the wires up here or elsewhere that are damaged. Um, you know the whole thing with it when it warms up and it starts to work it might not be caps but it could be caps because they did use low quality um but uh, you know through uh, you know one of the comment one of the uh, discussion points i guess on my first video there has been you know is there anything wrong with using through hole caps and technically you know you get the same performance there there's no issues from that point of view but you imagine you know the corrosion has damaged some of these pads here uh, and the, you know the uh, epoxy or whatever that holds the pad onto the PCB is not perhaps as strong as it was originally in manufacture. So when you mount a cap like this on here, um, in transit, you know a, a knock or a bang. I mean, with small caps, it's probably not an issue, but certainly with larger caps, it would be. The weight of the capacitor can actually lift the pad, depending on how it's mounted. Um, but it, you know it's fairly uncommon you know when i look at these you can actually move them over you know you can bend them either way they're pretty good the pads on this so i would say you know for somebody who's not uh, you know comfortable doing smd work you could go this route but i would actually question that whole thought process there um, i'll show you when we come to put some smd ones in a minute it really is no harder than fitting one of these and actually I think you know it's easier to fit an SMD cap you, d you get a cleaner job certainly when you clean it up afterwards with a cotton bud and some IPA and hopefully you'll we'll see some evidence of that as it you know go around some of these and show you how to do them but it really is just a case of you know cleaning up the pads removing the solder with some flux and the solder braid um, and then you know just hold the cap in place make sure the pads are as you know aligned as possible both sides and just solder one side Turn it around, you know, inspect it, is it straight? If it's not, adjust that single point you've soldered just until you get it aligned perfectly straight. Then go around to the other side and solder that. There's nothing rocket science about it. Yeah, you need a, maybe a smaller tip on your iron, but I don't even agree with that, actually. I've got quite a large tip on my iron, and I'll bet you anything I can do all the, the SMD caps on this. So the whole thing there about, you know, oh, let's do through hole because it's easier than SMD, it's, it's the same thing. It, is, it's, it really is the same thing, and you can do a cleaner job you know, let's say afterwards with SMD caps. Um, the hard part with recapping something like this is removing the caps. You know, that's really where you, you, you really should use hot air. You know, you get some captain tape around the area, you know, that you want to protect, like these little components down here, for example, if we're removing one of these caps. Uh, and then just, you know, set your 
uh, hot air to uh, I don't know, 300 degrees ish somewhere between 2 280 350 somewhere in that region um, and just you know go around the cap for maybe 30 to 60 seconds and you'll be able to just very carefully you know move it out of the way and clean up the pads there won't be any issue there so you know you could get one of those something like an A10 uh, is it an 858 D off Amazon 60 quid there hot air you know hot air rework station it's not mega expensive there's nothing rocket science about it it's uh, you know there's no voodoo involved or anything like that it's, it's really easy to do um, so you know there are other techniques we talked about in other videos you know twisting them and, you know I wouldn't do that I really wouldn't so, you know it's something the years ago I used to occasionally do on certain boards but uh, more often than not you damage the pads and it's the same thing with you know you can cut the cans as well that's another technique that works a bit better but still there's a small chance of damage in it and if it's only going to cost you you know 50 60 quid for a hot air rework station why not do it the you know the the right way and then at least you've got that equipment you could use it to recap other systems in future but anyway i'm rambling so we'll get the board out now and we'll start some of the uh, cleanup work so to get the board out of these i didn't cover this in part one you know you've got a screw there and there was a screw up here which was a bit corroded so i'll need to clean the, the top of that and there was one here and then you've got two here for the uh, car slot and then that cover just lifts off there. Uh, at this point the board's free. It's worth disconnecting this here for the uh, power connector at the back. It does actually disconnect at both ends, but there's no point in disconnecting it there. We'll just leave that little sub PCB in. Um, and then down here, it's a similar thing. Just got three, three of these little uh, connectors here. Just carefully pull these out. Try not to put uh, stress on the wire when you do this. Try and actually pull the connector. You can use the wire to help support it as you pull it out, but yeah those should come out there we go uh, and that should now mean that the board is uh, you know removable oh, we got this wire here I forgot about that uh, I think originally that wasn't uh, screwed in there so let's just remove that so I got the board on our ESD mat uh, and let's say you're gonna need some desolder braid useful for cleaning up things like that you can I'll show you in a, up close in a set where I removed the excess solder on there but it's tinned now that's a nice thing um, and one or two people have suggested you know you can use like uh, nail varnish to cover that or you can get proper you know um, uh, solder mask paint you know it's the right color green there just to cover over that but it really isn't a big deal I think one or two people said well you know large areas you want to cover it up just in case anything metallic falls on the board my point there would be if you're dropping metallic things on the board the the last thing you're worried about is a little thing like that really when you've got all these connections everywhere and stuff on there anyway you know all these little solder points you can see here uh, you know for wires and all sorts of things so you could just leave it like that is the point I'm trying to set, uh, trying to make is once it's covered with solder you know solder is not going to be affected by the elements you know just like it isn't on these you know chips and things it's it's fine uh, it's not like exposed copper which will with time uh, start to corrode so yeah you need some good flux as well and before the ESD police jump onto this video because there's always somebody who says you know oh my god you didn't take ESD precautions you haven't got a wrist strap on or whatever yeah I have wear an ESD wrist strap I have an ESD wrist strap on um, and I'm on an ESD mat here so I think we'll start on this side here uh, this is probably going to be the easiest way and just work our way across so we'll just start by uh, just heating the pin there and hang on should be able to just lift that up that's it and heat that one there we go that's the cap removed and I just need to uh, hold this a sec it is marked there you can see I don't know you can see that's a plus a white plus marked on the silk screen there to show that the top is a uh, positive um, but just be careful you know do check that those are there it's not being eroded off by some uh, alkaline from the capacitor electrolyte because that's what it provides you know you get alkaline on the board there and you can treat it and I will do with some acet acetic acid get some like uh, white vinegar just diluted with a bit of uh, distilled water or something and you can use that and you should use that really just to uh, neutralize clean around with some cotton buds then use some IPA on some cotton buds um, just to wash it off so that's a hundred microfarads uh, you can't quite see that hundred microfarads 25 volts so we'll get one of the uh, replacement caps and uh, yeah credit to these guys obviously I paid for this it wasn't donated or anything like that um, but this arrived in less than a week actually all the way from the States so I was pleasantly surprised so all of the hundreds are all the same voltage rating here so and there's no issue there that looks like it's probably gonna be the right size it might be a bit of a tight fit you know this yeah we'll soon find out 
So the first uh, thing we need to do here is, uh, bear in mind someone has cleaned this up previously anyway, but um, if you removed an SMD cap from there, I wouldn't just get flux on there, clean up with some vinegar and stuff first, an IPA, then clean up with some flux and the solder braid, uh, and then repeat perhaps with the vinegar and IPA, um, depending on how bad it is. So in the first instance we've got a really large blob there, so I'm just going to use the uh, solder pump, just because there's so much, you know, it's just make it a bit easier, and then we'll get the solder braid on there, as you can see. Just try and steer clear of you know, any plastic connectors and things like that. You could get some captain tape on there for something's close to an area you wanted to uh, you know work on with the iron here. And we'll just gently go over that like this. So hopefully you can see that's uh, super clean there. So the negative on these is the uh, black band there. So we just need to get this around the right way, bearing in mind positives on the top side here. Uh, and it's like I say, just, you know, you can just put this on. Hang on. Uh, a, a small screwdriver, you know, a jeweler's uh, screwdriver or something can help you align this. But it really is just a case of just putting it on there um, and then inspecting, just to make sure the pins, uh, you know, in the right places on both sides, so they're overlapping the pads, so you've got sufficient area there to solder onto. And then, like I say, just you know, hold it down. I usually use a tool, actually, just a, not this, but a, jewel, a jeweler's screwdriver, and I usually just hold it on top like that, and then we just touch the iron on one side. I'll see if I can film this. It's not easy because my tripod's too high for macro. So I'm just inspecting to get the uh, alignment uh, right here. Yeah, and that's not too bad. Sometimes you might find that the cap looks straight and the can. You know, the print on the can isn't, and this is a good example of that actually. Um, so if I fit it straight with relationship to its pins, you'll see in a minute when I show you up close that the print on top is not straight. So don't be, uh, you know, confused into thinking that because the uh, little black band here is at a slight angle when I look straight down with the camera that I've put it on crooked. Uh, I haven't. It's actually the print on there is not uh, completely straight. Uh, now that could indicate, uh, you know, it being a cheap quality uh, cap. I uh, hope not. Uh, they do look okay to me. I can't really tell what manufacturer they are, but we might be able to tell that from a close-up of the can there. I'm not sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, the technique, like I say, we've already got a bit of flux there anyway, so we'll just get some solder onto the tip here. And too much is not a problem. We can always just remove it afterwards with a bit of uh, desolder braid. Uh, and I'm going to be at a really strange angle here, so this is uh, going to be a bit hard for me to do. But we'll just try and, uh, let's say, hold it down, let's say with the tool like that. Try not to get near that connector. Yeah, there we go. So that's one side done. It really is that simple. So I'll just turn it around a little bit so you can see the other side here. Uh, and again, I'm going to be at a really weird angle doing this. Uh, again, I'll just put a little bit more solder on the tip and I'm having to use my left hand here for the purposes of filming So this is left-handed. <laughs> I don't solder left-handed. I'm not ambidextrous either So again, just touch nearby There we go. Right, so you can see there's a big chunk of solder on there You know, it's a bit, uh, you know, there's a bit of a sticky outy bit on it But uh, all we need to do is get some more flux on there and just touch each side. Sorry, I know my Fingers are probably obscuring the shot here. I mean, this was a good one to start with because the board was, uh, you know, didn't really need cleaning up or anything around that area. It was pretty good to start with. But uh, again, I'm going to be left handed here when I do this. So let's just uh, try and avoid the connector. And I'm going to be wobbling a bit because, let's say, I'm right handed. So you just touched it there like that. Nice clean solder point. I'll see if I can come in from this side this time on this one yeah that's not too bad and I'll uh, just clean up now with a cotton bud and uh, give you a close up so here's a super close up for you uh, you can see a nice solder point there and a nice solder point over here and as I say can you see this print here is mislined and don't be fooled into thinking that means I've mislined it, I haven't um, the centre 
you know, the tab that came out on the cap here was bang. It is still bang in the middle of the, the pad down there, and it's the same down here. We could perhaps uh, show you one of those caps up close as I put one on the next uh, spot now, and we should see the same thing probably, where it'll be, you know, it looks like that. It looks, you know, at a weird angle, where actually it's perfectly straight, it's flat, it's exactly how it should be correctly mounted. But uh, yeah, that's one down and about, uh, I don't know, 50 or 60 to go, I think. So the way I'm doing these is not going sort of left to right. I've decided to go through these cap by cap. So we're on the 100 microfarad ones at the moment. So the next one I've found that's 100 is here. So we'll just do the same thing with this one. Just gently heat uh, and only move the pin when you know it's totally molten. That's it. Uh, and then do the same with the other side. And I can smell electrolyte. And as I'm doing these, let's say we're, we're going to be cleaning up some of them more than others. Uh, you know, the area around. I mean, the fact that I could smell, I could still smell it now, really pungent uh, electrolyte actually. Um, yeah, I'll be focusing very, very carefully on this one around, looking at all the wires and things, because that's what the uh, important bit is here while we're doing this, um, is to make sure we clean up properly. So we'll just, uh, let's say, just remove this excess solder here. So we'll just get a bit of flux on there, and uh, I'll just clean up those two pads. Uh, and I'll, I'll treat that area with some vinegar, actually, and uh, some isoprop and stuff, and just inspect the wires closely. So I've cotton bump with a bit of IPA just to get the flux off, just generally, you don't want to snag any sharp solder points and things and remove a part of a trace. Uh, and then let's say, I'm, once I've got this off, I'm just going to go around that area with a bit of vinegar. And of course, once we've uh, done all this, we can actually, you know, pour some uh, IPA around the areas here where we've done all this work and give it a final brush down, but we'll do that right at the end when we've cleaned everything up. So just cleaning with a tiny bit of uh, vinegar here as well now. Uh, and the reason you use vinegar is, like I say, it's alkaline. You know, al aluminium capacitors typically, the stuff they leak is alkaline. So it's alkaline damage, not acid damage you get on these. Um, and the acid, you know, if you do your chemistry, you know, it just neutralizes. Uh, again, we'll just go over that with some uh, IPA now. And obviously each point, you know, inspect really closely, you know, all around the pads, the wires, any little SMD components. You're looking for any signs of corrosion having got into those wires or onto the, the edges of components. If any of these little caps here have been affected, um, we could just get some flux, you know, just get a little bit of your flux on there and just touch with the iron uh, and you'll see it re reflow. You know, you may need to, some, in some cases, you know, use some desolderate to remove the crusty solder if it's pretty uh, corroded. Um, but you can reflow that way, and I'll perhaps find some examples of that on the underside of the board later. So I'm just about to solder this one down, just like we did the first one. You can see it's perfectly aligned um, on the pads there. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. I am quite close. Uh, and the band actually looks straight on this one. So it was just that previous cap. I'll see if we can find another one where it was you know, slightly off at an angle, the print on the top. So that's one side done. Let's uh, just do this side. You can see I've got some uh, solder there unintentionally on that cap. That's a good idea where you would want to use uh, captain tape, a good place to use captain tape. But as you can see with the flux there, just touch it. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, it's extra solder has removed. So again, uh, cotton bud with some IPA, lots of cleaning with cotton buds and IPA. You know, you're going to go through a fair few cotton buds. Uh, incidentally, try and get lint-free cotton buds. You can get ones that are better suited to doing something like this, you know, the design for uh, electronic uh, cleanup work. So, yeah, looking good again. Uh, hopefully you can see. So it's blurring a little bit there. But, yeah, solder points are nice and good on that. So our next 100 is, uh, not that one, that was a 22, so we'll just shift that one out of the way. It's this one here. So there is going to be some more cleanup work around here because this is quite a mucky area. Some of the wires were affected and there's a trace, I think, certainly trace down uh, here. You can't quite see that needs uh, some, some repair work, I think. Um, but it might be worth removing these little inductors or whatever they are here. There's just two, two uh, I don't know if you can see this, so I can get the camera in the right place. 
just uh, two solder points holding those on. Um, but it's worth doing things like that in certain scenarios, you know, removing that if the corrosion's got under it, just to look around it and inspect it, and then just stick it back on if it's not, you know. A um, couple more wanderers here. So here's an example where the print on the can is not right. I don't know what you can see. Can you see we're dead in the center there on the bottom? And we're dead in the center on the top, but you can see the band is like just at a slight angle, the print on the top of it. But the cap is totally straight, uh, you know, aligned correctly. So there we go, that's uh, two more done there. And like I say, that bottom one is straight, it's just the print on the can isn't. Uh, and as we get, as we go around, you know, we can clean up the area around each one, you know, so the, the, you know, the immediate vicinity around these is super clean, including all the wires. Uh, but as we do these, you know, we'll start to go around this area here and clean up around this chip, inspect around the components and wires around there. And, you know, similarly, as we just move around the board here. So I've removed the uh, inductor from here. Um, as part of removing this cap, so I need to clean up this area. But this is where I can't quite see it through the viewfinder now. There was a trace, a greenish or a black here. It has, yeah, a black trace here. Hopefully, you can see that. So I'm going to need to scratch the surface off that because that is corroded. Uh, and then just get some solder and flux and tin it up. So hopefully, you can see how much better that is now. That trace, instead of looking uh, green as it was, it's now completely tinned all the way down here. Still got a little via there, don't you can see, it's crusty. The one over here cleaned up nicely. But that's all I'm going to do again, you know, get a bit of flux on there. It's perhaps potentially scrape the top of the via there to get the corrosion off. Try and suck up the solder with a bit of uh, the solder braid. And try and refill that via. Just make sure we've got good connectivity to the other side. Uh, and this is my patented uh, technique actually of using desolder braid with a bit of solder to you know, just drag it over and that works. I've never seen that demonstrated anywhere else on anybody else's channel. Um, I'm sure somebody else has done it some at some point in time, but I find that you know for really really small traces like that, you try and get solder on them there and try and flow that with solder and flux. It's not that easy. Uh, it works really super easy with uh, desolder braid, just dragging it along there. Let the the desolder braid uh, transfer the heat. Uh, as long as you've got loads of flux, the solder just coats it really nicely. So there we go. Cleaned up around this area considerably. You know, just from about the boundary. Here, obviously this cap and everything on that side needs doing, but we can get the inductor back on, get that cap back on, we're all cleaner here, the vias are all super clean, no issues whatsoever there. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is some of the ones around the power supply section here, let's, let's get this lot here out of the way. So there's a couple of SMD ones here, I think a 22 and a 47. So I'll get these off and do those, there's a lot of corrosion around there, so I'll show you the board once I've got those off. So with that 22 off there, look at that, ouch, what a state. You can see this is all blackened, this trace here, going to this little, uh, what I think is an amplifier chip, um, for the sound I think. And then corrosion here, you know, the exposed copper. So uh, yeah, same thing, I'll get some uh, flux and the solder braid to clean the thing to start with. Potentially scratch this trace here and cover it. Uh, and just pay close inspe inspection to the pins here and you know get some IPA and stuff and clean around that area with vinegar. Just a case of doing a bit of this very, very carefully on the surface there where all of that corrosion is. And I've done that top pad, uh, but if we go same around here, yeah, the corrosion is awful actually. But by the time we've done this a fair bit, um, it should bring back a conductive surface um, and we'll get some flux on uh, solder on there it should come up look, looking like new I think so hopefully you can see that's looking a lot better there now exposed copper nice and clean you know obviously just in this area I've not extended out the further uh, you know distance uh, when we get this cap off you know that'll be the final part around this area here um, I've cleaned up under this little IC here this uh, amp chip I think it is um, inspected the wires and the, the caps and resistors and things around here everything looks okay so it is just a case of uh, turning these up and getting the uh, new cap on so not too bad down this side here now on this side because we've got a lot of exposed trace it's easy for it to flow so it doesn't look a great shape on this side but we've got a good connection and the, the trace there is covered the trace up here is covered 
and we're all clean around it. Uh, you know, and the chip here is okay. All the wires are okay. Uh, so as you can see, I've just removed the 47 from here. A similar story, corroded traces and things and dirty, so yeah, rinse, repeat. So just removing the 470 microfarad cap, and again I can smell uh, pretty strong electrolyte, so whoever did this is never really cleaned up at all. Yeah, so nice and clean there, it's starting to look better this area already, as soon as we you know, get a bit further along, the power supply side uh, should be pretty good. So just... Uh, just soldering that 470. Uh, I see a lot of people soldering on videos and they go like this, they go, stick a blob on and go, I'm done. That's not the way to do it when you're using double sided boards like this. You want to, you know, heat the pin up, add the solder and flux at the same time and leave it for a good, depending on the iron, a good two, three, four seconds there for the solder to flow through to the other side. Otherwise you don't get quite uh, as good a join. So we're getting there. All of these uh, have been done around here. We just need to do these two. Um, and then if I zoom you out a bit, we'll see if I could just point out which ones need doing, obviously. It's, uh, you know, there's a couple here, there's these, there's all the ones in front of the heat sinks here. All the ones down here next to the volume and uh, headphone output. Uh, and then one or two down the uh, bottom end uh, of the board here as well, uh, and all these. So there's still a fair few, I'll probably say I'm about 40%, maybe not quite 40%. Yeah, around 30, 35 to 40% uh, the way done here. So this particular area has been super time consuming. So you can see what I've done, I've covered any exposed bits here with solder, uh, any of the little vias, I've covered them with solder. Um, you know, just cleaned up the whole area really, so everything looks okay, I've reflowed one or two of these components here as well. Uh, I might just do the other side of this chip, you can see that side has been done. I mean, it, it you know, it kind of looks a bit of a mess, but actually it's not. It is super, super, super clean and super tidy, um, about as tidy as probably anyone could get it really all things considered I'll flip the board over I'll just show you what I've done on the other side where all of these little vias are so again on the so on the underside here again I've reflowed um, all around here all these little resistors and caps and things and these two transistors uh, and you can see I've flood filled the vias there um, that's useful to do and I did test connectivity first and I cleaned them out with uh, a pin you know got a pin in there to get all the, the contamination out uh, and leaked some vinegar through and then leaked some IPA through and again used a pin just to make sure it's super clean tested connectivity uh, and then I've flood filled them with solder you know got some flux on there scratched the surface a little bit um, and that should stop any corrosion if there is a tiny little bit in there it should stop it really I think it would probably need oxygen to um, corrode further sorry I know it's a bit blurring a little bit there um, so like I say all I've done is just this little bit here but as I do some of these other ones around here, you know, some of these here like look like they need reflowing. So I'm probably going to go over the majority of these in this area here as we clean this area up. So you might not be able to see very well because of the uh, flux here. But all I'm doing is uh, trying to just scratch the corrosion off the surface here. You can see, you know, even with the flux the, and the using the solder braid, it's not pulled off the solder. It's not cleaned up the pad. Uh, and this is the thing you need to do, you know, this bit of rinse repeat here. Um, I'll give it another go with some more flux in a minute and some more solder braid. And uh, get some vinegar on there as well again, you know, and just rinse repeat, you know, that whole cycle of cleaning there. But uh, yeah, persistence is the thing and just patience, you know, and inspecting closely with uh, magnifier. Not sure how well this is going to come out, but I just want to just show you um, some of the process here. Getting some flux and just reflowing one or two of these. That's not making uh, a good uh, flow there actually because of the corrosion. So this is one of these things we have to rinse, repeat. You know, clean it all up again. Get some fresh flux on, um, and then try it a second time. You can see that side there is flowing quite nicely on that one. Uh, let's see if we can do this side here. Yeah, it's flowing a little bit, not a lot. There is some corrosion there. Like I said, we might need to remove the old solder first. Um, and this this is the big problem, because once the corrosion's got on there, it damages the solder, you know. 
so even when you try and heat and reflow it doesn't flow very well at all um, you're best off trying to you know do this a few times and remove it with a solder braid uh, and then introduce new solder but it's going to take some time you know this is highly time consuming this particular part here but it is just a case of just going around each one of these um, and just making sure we've got nice sold joints hopefully you can see that that's not too bad on that one so probably about 50 percent complete now uh, as you can see super clean all around here all been uh, reflowed and looking very nice indeed actually uh, we've done all that side as well still a little bit of flux in here that i need to get out later i'll pour some ipa over um, so we just need to you know do up here around here uh, and then just in a few locations um, you know further into the board but all around this section is uh, is looking super clean all the wires are clean there good connectivity um, you know any traces that were exposed have been uh, coated with uh, solder as you can see right up to the very edges so there's no exposed copper um, I think that's uh, it's looking good and another quick update, these ones are super easy actually, the ones that are in the middle of the board here, there's very little corrosion. You can see I've had to turn up a few traces here, there was some uh, damage there. Um, but yeah, this, these ones are a lot quicker, I must have spent about two minutes putting each one of these on. There's something else I couldn't resist showing you here, and I spotted this actually on a review of the first part. If you watch that video you'll be able to see it. Uh, it's the point where I think I was showing the uh, how cheap the brand of these caps were here and can you see here can you see this is deformed um, I'll take it out in a minute just to give you a closer look but it's been crushed the can is crushed it's uh, yeah I bet that's affecting the uh, the capacitance there and that so here's a close look at that cap can you see it's squashed be interesting to get that on the cap meter later but I'm suspecting that that uh, would cause a big problem with that cap actually I cannot believe somebody would fit that in there like that that's just absolutely crazy so another quick update you can see all the top section here is done and um, we did a load around here as well so I'm now going to start doing these three these through hole ones I'll get rid of those first and the one down here next to the power switch uh, and then perhaps do this side and then finish off just moving across this way because there's still quite a few up this side here so the cap down here I heated this side and the cap just came straight off this side was not even attached there's actually just like a, a, a I don't know a quarter of a pad on that side so this one was was pretty bad actually the pads all of the others have been okay not single, seen a single pad where the pad has actually been damaged you know to the point where, where the pads either lifted or there's a piece of it missing but with this one it wasn't even connected on one side so that's interesting I'd like to understand where that is on the uh, in the schematics there you know on the part of the board yeah it's right next to uh, the uh, DAC actually so I'm guessing yeah that would have been something to do with the DAC so I fixed that one, you can see I had to tin up around, uh, I'll do your macro uh, later on this, um, but it's joined up okay, uh, you know there was a, like I said a quarter of a pad on the, on the positive side here, uh, but just enough to solder on there, I didn't need to you know, extend the pad out or anything like that. So I think the next thing uh, I'm going to do is uh, these up here, we'll do this one next and fix around that area there. and then we'll get the solder braid and some flux into there afterwards. I need to watch out for this little ceramic cap here because that's going to come off the board if I'm not careful. It's quite a large area, I'm going to need a new tube of flux actually, that's the one thing with this repair. It's, uh, it's not cost me much in the way of solder but it's uh, certainly eaten its way through a full um, uh, tube of flux there. So I'll just uh, clean the tip and uh, just have a bit of a slide around with this actually hopefully these pads will not come off yeah they're coming up fairly clean I think yeah you can see the pads there looking super clean um, and if I just get the right angle we just drag this around here we should be able to tin up that exposed bit I need to scratch away at some of this, I'm not sure yet. 
from the edge is there. So it's a bit too hard to film all of this, but as you can see, I'm masking off a few bits around this uh, cap here with Captain Tape. Got that cap on there. I need to clean up the point on this side. Uh, the solder looks pretty good all throughout, but I've used the Captain Tape here to stop the solder flowing everywhere and making all the traces look big and bulgy and messy and stuff. And uh, it'll just allow me to do a better job on this little cap here. Painfully slow progress here. So I've got three more done there. Just the ones over here now. So I've just removed a couple of 22s from there, one was barely hanging on again. As soon as I desoldered one pin, the other side just came off, so it was barely making a connection. Uh, and the other one, I don't know if you can see, it's, uh, yeah I might have to macro on that, but it's got kind of like a squarish edge there, as if it's been crushed again. Um, yeah, it's not going to show up on the camera there, it might do if I just rotate a little bit, but it's got a kind of square edge on one side. Uh, yeah, I just can't believe the quality of these, they're just awful. I think we've done. The hardest two were these two here right next to these connectors. Super hard to get to. Um, these two I've not replaced but I've checked them they're okay. I've just marked them to indicate they're okay. Um, but underneath, you know you can see, it's where this BTL driver is. You'd have to bend this over and pull this uh, protective thing off here that's stuck onto the board. Uh, I'd rather not interfere with that. Um, and I do know that, like I say, they're all right. They're the uh, you know through hole types. They wouldn't have leaked anyway. Um, it's just the ones up here generally on these, a bit like on the Super CD Run uh, twos actually. So I think we're good. I think what I'm going to do next is obviously you know give it a bit more of a clean. I mean you can see it's it does look super clean, really, uh, just as things stand. But yeah, I'll get some more IPA and just have a you know go with the toothbrush there just to make sure it's super clean. But we'll uh, just have a bit of uh, a clean up in this area here, I think. So you can see we've still got a bit of exposed copper there. You can see where I uh, cleaned up, you know, that there previously. Uh, that was like that from the factory, you know. So they've done a similar thing there themselves. Um, but we'll just go around and make sure there's no exposed bits of copper like that. I'll reflow this uh, amp chip, or whatever it is here, it looks like an op amp or something. And you can see we've got a couple of really dirty wires here, so I'll just double check these again, you know, scratch them off, clean them up, solder them, uh, you know, get some solder on flux, um, and just make sure there's a connectivity between both sides, and then just, you know, IPA on this and just toothbrush this whole area down, and then I'll perhaps show you the end result. So it's been incredibly tricky, but you can see, you know, I've managed to tin a few traces here that were damaged, um, resoldered the connections on the uh, that amp chip there. They're not that great, actually. It really could do with perhaps uh, a new chip on there, but the connections are all right. You know, I have put fresh solder, removed some of the solder, stuck some back on, but the you know, the pins are just not brilliant. And then, as you, you know, as you can see, I've reflowed some of the connections on these transistors and things, tinned a few traces up. Um, all these components around here have all been reflowed, resistors, fires. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's in pretty good condition, I think, all things considered. Um, it's been a huge amount of work, I have to admit. I spent like three evenings on this, three lunch times on it. It's, I don't think about the number of hours actually that has gone into this recap. It's the clean up work that's the big thing, it's not really changing the caps, the caps take about a minute or two each but there's a lot you know if you say two minutes each look how many there are 70 60 70 caps maybe more uh, so yeah the only thing we're going to be ch obviously uh, you know charging Alan for is the parts you know so some uh, flux because uh, I have used uh, pretty much a full tube of chip quick flux actually as you can see my tubes empty when I started it was fairly full that it was pretty much full um, that's not cheap stuff actually, it's about £8 a tube. Um, but beyond that, and a bit of solder, and some cotton buds, and a bit of IPA, you know, uh, you know, obviously the caps, um, not really a lot of parts, or consumables and things, but the labour, when I was in the trade, we used to charge almost £30 an hour, um, and I must have spent, ooh, I don't know, 15, easily 15 hours on this, um, can you imagine the cost? You know, I mean, we wouldn't charge that when we're in the trade. It would go, oh, okay, uh, yeah, we spent several hours on it. You know, let's just charge two hours labour. You know, you've got to be realistic and charge what something's worth. But 
that then pushes you into the realms of when certain types of faults come into your business, you start to question, you know, is it economically repairable? And I would say this one, the uh, or these, you know, generally, for someone in the industry, you know, uh, repair industry, to repair one of these for you, uh, it's probably not worth the time. You know, I, I can understand why people twist the caps off, and I can understand why people just put through hole on there because of how time consuming these are to repair. Um, I wouldn't actually like to work on uh, a duo again, actually. I did want to get myself one at some point. Um, not convinced. <laughs> I mean, my mind might change, you know. I said I would never recap another Super CD ROM 2 again. Yeah, I did one uh, for a friend there. Um, but yes, it was painful the second time round. Uh, luckily, I didn't need to swap out any of the SMDs again on that Super CD ROM 2. But these duos, the, the caps uh, go for fun. So with regards to the original faults, um, you know, the, the drive not operating correctly, you know, we had uh, the focus coils driven, the motor was going round and the head assembly was going to the right hand side, uh, damaging the gears I think. Um, you know, the first thought I had, let's say, was a, a CD logic fault, so, you know, this is why I homed in on this area. And as soon as I saw the, uh, you know, the wire down here next to this chip, I figured straight away that's probably what it was, and look, luckily I hit it first time. That was literally, you know, that I did that and I identified that within about a minute or two of getting the board out. Um, but that's why it pays to inspect around and just look for, you know, look for any damage and stuff. Uh, and that was the most obvious one. It did have quite a lot of uh, black stuff on the top of the wire and around the wire there. But all I did is just put the meter on continuity, measure from this side over to this side because here we should have shorts, you know, you should be able to measure anywhere on this rail here and get a short to the wire on the other side, there was nothing. So which is why I then went away and stuck this wire link here. Because if you look uh, where it goes, uh, I'll just turn this over again, the wire we were interested in, it's on this long trace here and goes to that wire. So what we need to do effectively is join from this point here on that side, yeah, connect a wire, to the destination of where that, via, that that trace was going on the other side, which was you know where the via came out here, so and that's it really. Um, and then you can you know, obviously just test connectivity and stuff again. You, well, you're going to have connectivity because you put a wire on it, but uh, that was all that was required. No other patch, you know, or link wires or anything on on here at all. Um, it's a shame we couldn't get this area looking a little bit better, but uh, yeah, it's a lot better than it was, I think. Uh, and the main thing is the caps just look super tidy and clean. We've got no exposed traces, you know, we fixed that trace there that was, uh, you know, exposed and a few other places where the traces were damaged on both sides of the board actually. Um, and it's just looking a lot better for having had all these caps redone. Um, you know, we had a crushed cap up here, one of them had a crushed can, one of the ones over here had a crushed can, one down here was not even on, one side was connected, one wasn't. So it's no wonder it was behaving strange. Um, I've got no idea what fixed the sound. I mean, the caps and things here are for the audio out here. Those uh, are probably passing the left right audio through the connector there, so it could have been one of those. I think it was at the point where I swapped one of those, we had the sound problem solved. So that could have been why well, we had that reverberation thing when I was playing that soundtrack in the uh, last video there. Uh, I think what we'll do now though is uh, just get this back in the uh, case and uh, just give it a try and make sure it works. So I need to clean one of the screws here, this has uh, been corroded up. Um, I'm surprised someone would just stick a corroded screw straight back in there. Well, no, I'm not actually. I shouldn't be surprised with anything with this board. Uh, some of the things that have been uh, on there and what have you. So it's worth pointing out the volume uh, adjustment here for the headphones was really crackly. You could, in fact, when you got it a certain way around, you got no sound at all. It cut out. So I just took it to pieces and uh, got some contact cleaner in there uh, and moved it around, you know, various uh, positions here just to uh, get that contact cleaner into the pot there. And that solved that. The headphones uh, works, you know, headphone output works fine now. So we've still got a wine. Uh, we'll have to have a look at that in a sec. I think. What I might do is swap back to the old carriage and just swap the gear over. Um, we do know that this, you know, the, the, the carriage assembly in here all works fine, but it, I think the wine has come from the coils actually. I think it's the uh, focus and tracking coils. I think they're just a bit noisy, but it does work absolutely perfectly. Um, I had another good look at the pot. I don't think anyone's adjusted the pot. I think I mentioned in the previous video someone adjusted it. I don't think that's the case. I think someone's adjusted Allen's just a tiny bit. So uh, yeah, we'll have a look at the RF levels and compare them, but I suspect they're going to be at a very, very, very similar level. 
And then finally, obviously, we just need to give this a bit of a clean. I might just give it a bit of a clean now, actually, to see uh, what a difference that makes. You can see there, there was a piece of tape. I will put some tape on this just to hold the lid because there were no screws. Uh, and it's left a bit of a pattern there. But I think when we give that a wipe down, um, I'm not sure it's a textured plastic. You can't really tell. I don't think it is. But I'll be very careful about what we use to clean this. Um, I'm not sure about whether to get any plastic cleaner on here because of the kind of uh, texture. Um, I'll test on uh, an inconspicuous area underneath or something first, just in a very, very small spot, just to make sure it's not going to affect it, because in theory we should be able to get these white marks and things off here. So just a bit of soap and water here initially, uh, just to see what difference that makes, probably not a lot. Yeah, you can see this, the white marks are still here. Yeah, so it would appear that IPA is our friend here actually, um, most of the marks on the front have come off with just a bit of IPA and it's not discolouring the plastic. There were quite a lot of mucky marks there under here as well. Um, it's just these scratches I'm not so sure about. So that's about as clean as it's going to go. You can still see, you know, there's little scratches here. Um, it's one of these where when you get these cable marks and things, it permanently marks it. IPA won't bring it off, back to black doesn't bring it off. But, uh, and, and plastic polish doesn't really make a difference either. But back to black on a plastic like this is really good actually. It makes, you know, it's made the colour come out a lot deeper uh, and darker. So yeah, overall uh, it's not too bad, but you can see, you know, it, this, there are scratches on there. Uh, it just looks a bit better than it did when it arrived. So I'll try and give you a quick scan around the whole board here. Uh, and you can have a look at each one of these caps. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good really, all things considered. Uh, one down there, swap that one out, one's down here, again looking a lot better, not perfect, but a lot better, sorry I apologise for the wind, we've got a hurricane going on here or something. So yeah, I think it's probably about as good as you could expect really. So a bit of a correction to the previous video here. In the previous video, I pointed out the teeth and it just so happened that when the carriage was right up to the top here, that's where those broken teeth or damaged teeth were aligned with the worm uh, gear thing, call it what you will, I don't know what it's called that officially. Um, worm gear is what I call it. Uh, so the teeth I don't think are the problem and the reason I know that is because I put the old carriage back on there and the teeth were sort of aligned in a position where when the head was in the middle, those teeth would be engaged with the, the worm gear thing um, and I thought okay well let's test it again and the reason I was trying to do two tests at once what, what I want to do is test the gear but also test the head you know the laser because this one makes a, a bit of a whine it's actually quieter now than when I first uh, you know first put this unit in there but it is the actual optical pickup part that's whining and I think it's just the, the coils are making it's like coil whine you know you've got a, a whine coming from the coils there there's not much you can do about that I don't think um, because it works perfectly it's just a bit noisy but anyway, I tried the old drive, and I was trying to kind of expecting that gear to cause a problem sort of mid middle of the disc, and it wasn't. The same thing was happening when you got to like track 12, 13, 14, that was where the issue happens. Um, and at that point it stopped reading discs, and uh, you know, I messed around with it for a bit, and then it started reading discs again. The same thing happened, it stopped around track 13, 14, and then it stopped reading discs. So I think the tracking coils on that other laser are the issue, and the gear Despite the fact it's got a few worn teeth at tooth ends there, um, the bit Alan did there just to shave the, the, the broken bits off and stuff has actually worked, and that gear is actually okay as far as I can see. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting to know, I guess. So, we're all ready to reassemble now. So, a bit of uh, image fight too. There, that's working fine. Uh, let's just start that. What I'm going to do next is get the scope onto the uh, RF test pad there. Um, and just uh, have a look at the RF level because I'm just curious to see what you know what, what sort of level we should expect on a duo. And it's going to be similar with the other systems as well. You know, the Super the CD-ROM 2 is probably going to have a similar level. That's one thing I haven't checked actually in the couple of uh, Super CD-ROM 2s I've looked at. So I might do that at some point in the future. So this part's mostly for the benefit of Alan actually. But when you come to put the lid back on, just make sure you get it uh, you know the back of the case lined first here. Because what can happen is this switch here can be pressed down in such a way that it sort of stays stuck. I can't do it now, I can't actually re replicate it. But uh, you know, the little plastic notch on the inside here, if that's not lined up correctly, 
I'll show you the underneath, it's a very small, can you see it's a, a small point there. If you just get it slightly misaligned, it can push it sideways, it stays permanently latched on so that it thinks the uh, you know the drawers shut all the time so if you you know just test you know with power once you've got the lid back on uh, and just make sure that that the, the lid switch is actually working if it's not take the lid off you'll probably see this is stuck down if you just tap it just press a little bit it should flip back up again uh, and then just retry putting the lid back on so i don't know whether that's a common thing on all of these or whether it's just this one suffers from that i'm not sure but you know you can see it's working but once or twice now i put the lid back on and the switch has been on permanently and took the lid off and it has been stuck down uh, so just bear that in mind so in terms of taking measurements you know test pads um, there are three connectors so these have come straight from the console 5 wiki somebody has actually spent some time actually reversing this to work out what these are so that's p6 uh, p7 is down here and that's p5 and i think p5 is where the rf test pad is on pin two so that's where we're going to be looking um, and these pots they've also worked out what these pots are as well um, and i'll just briefly just mention those so vr 101 i'm not sure whether that is that's uh, the error focus balance vr 102 is your focus bias vr 3 is your tracking gain uh, and uh, vr 104 is focus gain and vr 105 is vco um, a pll phase lock loop so to stay well away from VR105, you wouldn't need to adjust that, and if anybody has adjusted that, you're going to need a frequency counter to adjust it correctly. Yeah, so I managed to get that switch to stay down, can you see, it's pretty much flat, just by pulling it down, just pulling it forward a tiny bit. So, I'm not sure, like I say, if that's just specific to Islanders, but that's going to assist me now in testing, because uh, I can just press the run button, and hopefully, yeah, you can see the CD spinning. It gets a bit tricky because you've got to hold these wires down at the same time as making your adjustments. So uh, I'll point you the scope. Hang on. So on the 200 millivolts uh, test signal there, as you can see, one block represents 200 millivolts, uh, you know, peak to peak. So if we just connect that up to the CD-ROM now. Right, so we're on to the first audio track and I'm going to measure, and we're going to probe pin 2 on P5 here. There you go, you can see the RF level, it's bobbing around a bit. So what have we got there? Uh, quite high actually, it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, pretty much 6 divisions. That's, uh, that's quite high, not what I expected at all. I might just pull that down a little bit actually. And in case you're wondering, the easy way to connect the ground is over here, onto the drive, where the ground strap goes to. And pin 2 is the second pin, uh, down here on the connector. So a correction to the last video, and I did sort of kind of correct it in the video itself actually. I thought maybe this was the DSP, it's not it's not, not going to be enough connections for a DSP, I don't think. The DSPs tend to be a larger chip, typically. But this one's actually the uh, servo signal processor. So your tracking coils and focus coils, um, you know, are going to be connected uh, through this. This is going to be controlling those. And this chip down here is your DSP. So there's also a chip on the underside, which uh, we'll have seen previously. It'll be, I think it's got a Sony marking on it. It might be in a sort of dual inline package rather than a quad flat pack. And I think that's the uh, RF amp. And I guess other things to point out, I think we've got um, an audio amplifier up here. Those are DRAM chips there, two Oki DRAMs. And all these little 8-pin devices that are marked 4558, uh, and there are numerous ones, uh, they're just op-amps, you, know, you can see them here. So this is one of these things that may help you out if you've not got a scope, all you need is a digital multimeter, and generally, uh, if someone's messed with these pots, if you set them in the, uh, the, the, the values I'm about to give you here, um, you should be almost in the approximate area. So VR102, uh, if we just measure from the centre pin to the bottom pin on the right, as you can see about 7.96k between the center and the top just let that stabilize same thing with VR 101 from the center pin on the left to the bottom pin on the right 66234 somewhere around that region and from the center pin to the top pin on the right hand side hang on, about 13.6k roughly there VR104, again, uh, the centre pin is on the left hand side here, and the bottom pin on the right, you can see uh, 15 points, 16k almost, 
there's going to be some fluctuation around here there's probably caps and things across these and from the center pin on the left to the top pin on the right hand side as you can see about 5.3k roughly so VR105 again center pin on the left bottom pin on the right this is the pot you don't want to mess with 0 0.04 ohms that's pretty much wound right round actually makes me wonder if someone's messed with that and on the right hand on the top and between the center pin and the top pin 470 ohms there I would suggest that's a 470 ohm uh, pot actually and someone's uh, you know that's been wound almost to its extreme and the final one here is VR103 the center pins on the top so we go between the top and the left as you can see uh, hopefully the lights reflecting a bit there 16 point 7k roughly and um, between the center pin and the right hand pin if we can hold that in position 4.4k roughly so I thought it's worth showing you the pot actually uh, Alan's drive is set pretty much the same as this one and you can see which way this pot is pointing here it's like at a 45 degree slant so you know if someone's adjusted yours you could set yours in approximately the same position as that one and you're not going to be far off the mark um, but you've still got the glue on there um, someone hasn't adjusted this you know contrary to what I thought in the previous video it's uh, it's not been cracked off and I couldn't find anything about IC 104 on the wiki there uh, but I did go away and look up the data sheet and it is uh, an MCU that's the MCU for this uh, the, the drive uh, logic here and at the same time I got a bit of mollycott uh, around there as well so I just need to just wipe off the excess I just took this back off but uh, I don't want it touching the disc you know you just need enough just on the inside to you know assist uh, with free movement there here's that track in the set where we have the reverberation is this one I think can you hear yeah that was super distorted on the last video Check the upper tracks. This is where it starts to skip on the other uh, optical pickup. Yeah, working fine. So to remove the wine, uh, the mollycott didn't do it. The focus bias just need, needs a small tweak to the right there can you hear that silent now so I think there was too much um, bias on the uh, focus cause there yeah so I'll just test that thoroughly with uh, a bunch of press discs and some uh, you know burnt discs just make sure everything's okay but I think we can call that a success Skip a cut scene of there, I think. But it's working fine. I'm on the second level here of uh, Image Fight 2, I think it is. So it's a shame I couldn't get more of the scratches and things off there, but uh, it's all working absolutely perfect now. No noise from the drive, all the caps are all good. It should live to see another day. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.